Hey guys, so in today's video I'm going to be talking about the books that I read when I applied to medical school. Um, this is just a few of the ones that I read, there's way more out there, there's loads of reading lists online, I'll put some links in the description. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the first ones I'm going to talk about are all fictional books, um, or they're kind of based off of real life stories but they've been turned into a kind of funny books to read, um, they're kind of diary based, that kind of thing, but they're not like factual, um, like they're not scientific in that sense I suppose. So there's kind of, um, there's five I'm going to talk about, two of them are kind of diary based, um, you might have heard of them, one of them one of them is pretty famous and by no means do you have to read these if you're applying to medicine, in fact most of these books I would recommend for anyone to read just to like have some enjoyment from reading. Um, but the first two I'm going to talk about are d d diaries. Um, they were written by junior doctors at the time. Um, one of them is called Max Pemberton and he wrote um, Trust Me I'm a Junior Doctor and then the other one is called This Is Going To Hurt and that's by Adam Kay. Okay, so let's start with Adam Kay's um, This Is Going To Hurt. So I think that was the first book that I read um, and I think before you even, if you're thinking of applying to medical school, this is kind of like a must read. Um, because it's it's quite graphic in that it explains in quite detail what it's like to be a junior doctor working in the NHS. This was written sort of in the late early 2000s, so before 2010 and um, the NHS has changed thankfully since then, the junior doctors have new contracts now, uh, but the point still ta stands in that it's hard working for the NHS and the book does a really really good job of highlighting that, so I think if you're going to apply to medical school you need to be aware that it's not all rose-tinted spectacles and um, there's no rainbows and you know no unicorns, it's not magical. It's It can be glorified I think in the media. Um, I guess people are more aware of it now because of Covid and the news is doing quite a good job of reporting what it's really like but as a junior doctor things are not glamorous. They are quite a lot of the time quite boring, there's a lot of admin work, signing death certificates but this book does a really really good job of highlighting that. A key thing to take with you if you read this book and mention it in your personal statement is that it's highlighting first-hand examples of the sort of inequalities and unfairness that happens within the NHS. It's not a perfect system and although things are improving um, it's still a bit rough. Okay so the next book I'm going to talk about is called Trust Me I'm a Junior Doctor by um, Max Pemberton. This book is kind of similar to the Adam Kay book, but it does take a slightly different spin on things. I personally think it's a bit more humorous. It's not so um, dark and gloomy and it doesn't really highlight the inequalities in the NHS and the hierarchical system, but it certainly is, again, quite graphic. You'll learn about all sorts of things that junior doctors get to see. Um, I thought it was really funny, actually. I, I definitely think you should just read it for fun um, as well, but definitely kind of along the same lines as the Adam K one, this is going to hurt. But um, yeah, different spin on things, more humorous, I really enjoyed it. Um, one thing I would say the book highlights, and which I went on and did further reading about, was the junior doctor strikes. So the junior doctor strikes that I remember um, seeing on the news actually happened in 2016, which was after the book was written, but the book kind of foresees that junior doctors are unhappy, the work is too much, the shifts are too long, things need to change. Um, for those of you that don't know, the junior doctor strike was kind of um, a conflict between the health secretary at the time, who was Jeremy Hunt, and the junior doctors within the NHS. And um, it kind of, uh, there's, it's really complex, and if you want to read up on it, definitely you, I recommend reading up on it for interview practice. But um, in a nutshell, or a quick snippet, basically the health secretary wanted to expand the NHS services to be open on Saturdays and Sundays because he felt that patients would be more likely to attend clinic and that would reduce the number of cancellations and uh, missed appointments. But um, evidence showed that patient deaths were much more likely to happen at a weekend. Basically the doctors were saying that this isn't sensible, this is not beneficial and it's going to make us work harder, we're not going to get any more pay for it. Um, you know, things need to change if you want us to do this because in the current circumstances you can you cannot just expect junior doctors to work a Saturday and a Sunday and for the service to just be as good as it is in the week and for things to keep going, it, that's not going to be the case. Um, a paper was written in 2016 to kind of address the issue and it's been published on the British Medical Association website. I definitely recommend giving it a quick read. It's quite accessible actually, it's not that hard um, to understand. Um, the book definitely highlights that 
there's um, a part, a kind of power dynamic between junior doctors, senior house officers and consultants and other members of staff. And also it highlights how important the nurses are. Um, a big thing when you get to interview, you might even be asked this, I will do an interview video, but you'll probably be asked, so why medicine and not nursing? Or why not nursing? And you have to be able to talk about why nurses are equally as important or different, important in a different way. And the book, this book, um, Trust Me, I'm a Junior Doctor, does a really good job at explaining how important, as a junior doctor, nurses are. They will guide you through, help you out so much. And also your other colleagues. Um, you know, another thing about medicine is you work as a team. This book highlights that you are not on your own. You're working with other junior doctors all the time and it's important to, to use them and to um, speak to the others in your team because if you don't, um, it will be hard. It will be really hard. Yeah, the book the book is really good. I, I really enjoyed it, so definitely recommend. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the next book and this is called When Breath Becomes Air and it's by Paul Kalanithi. This book, oh, this is a nice, it, it's an interesting book. It's a really nice read. It's amazingly well written. You're, you'll go on an emotional roller coaster reading it and again I recommend reading it even if you're not thinking of applying to medicine um, but basically in summary it's written by an American um, doctor who um, did a previous degree he had an English degree loved creative thinking was also interested in psychology and how the mind works and then decided actually he wanted to study medicine um, went and did his medical degree and then specialized in neurosurgery and really 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 clever guy he went to Stanford went to Cambridge all sorts amazing um, was to training and basically got given this amazing opportunity to move with his girlfriend I think maybe she was his fiance at the time and um, they moved to a hospital where he could train to be right at the top of his game but unfortunately during the process he developed lung cancer and um, sadly he, he dies from the lung cancer shortly after having um, his first child a lovely baby girl um, the book is really interesting. It kind of documents a lot of aspects about what it is to be a doctor and also what it is to be a patient because ultimately Paul, um, who, who wrote the book after or during his diagnosis, was um, wanting to show that for so long he had been the doctor, he'd been the neurosurgeon, he'd been the one doing the training, the one in charge the one dealing with the patient. The vulnerability he felt when he became a patient himself um, caused him to change his view on things because all of a sudden he had to become the patient. He had to listen to the doctors telling him what to do. And because he had medical grounding and medical knowledge, the um, urge to just keep going and want to help other patients whilst being a patient was, was really strong and something that he had to cope with. Um, just yeah I enjoyed it a lot and it's not hard it's a, kind of a page turner I think I didn't take me that long to read it so I definitely recommend if you're looking for one that's um, short and sharp and gets you what tells you what you need to know so the next book is called this the man who mistook his wife for a hat and that's by Oliver Sacks um, I know this book is recommended particularly for psychology students or students who are looking to study psychology at uni but I reckon it's quite a good one to read if you're thinking of applying to medicine as well um, and I'm not just saying that because I read it, but I genuinely think it is quite interesting, especially if you're interested in like the brain and the links with um, psychology, but also it talks about a lot of different um, neurological disorders. Every different chapter is about a different patient that um, Oliver Sacks meets. So he splits the book up into different parts based on a grouping of conditions. So some of them are um, to do with like muscle movement. So that's a section in the book. Some of them to do are, are to do with like um, disability. That's another section in the book some of them to do with learning difficulties, that's another section in the book. So it's quite um, formulaic and it's quite uh, easy to process. And if you're making notes on it, that's a really good, like the layout is perfect for um, kind of understanding. And when you go back to review your books before interview, um, it's a really good one to have read because it's so easy to like remember what happens to where because it's in this amazing structure. Um, but yeah, it, it's really cool actually. He talks about so many different cases and different types of patients. I think one good thing to take from this book is how broad medicine is. And in just one sector, like in just neuroscience, there's so much going on here. And then of course there is the man who mistook his wife for a hat. The book is named after one particular chapter. Um, I'll leave you guys to, to read that and figure out what it's about. But um, yeah, there's, it's, it's just really interesting. And if you watch the news regularly, which you guys kind of should be doing if you're thinking of applying to medicine, you'll actually hear quite a lot of these kind of conditions mentioned occasionally. Um, 
so when you read the book you'll think oh my god yeah i heard of that one i know what this one is so that's a really good um way to make you feel like you're kind of interested and engaged with both the news and the book yeah definitely recommend okay so i'm going to move on to the next book called a very short introduction to medical ethics and that's by tony hope and i'm saying when i say this is a very short introduction and it really is it's like 80 pages read it you can read it in like two days um, if you're like coming up to interviews and you haven't read any books or you haven't got any books to write on a personal statement, read this, you will do it in like two two days, you can do it. Um, and it's it does what it says on the tin. It's an intro to medical ethics, it talks about euthanasia, it talks about um, consent, um, or not consent, yeah, it does talk about consent, confidentiality. There's a whole load of stuff in there, but, but it's so good. And it gives examples and debates and cases you can talk about. Um, yeah, it's it's really good. It gives you loads of concepts and before the point where you get to learning about the pillars of ethics, which if you're thinking of applying to medical school, you should learn about at one point. I will talk about those again in another video. Um, this covers all of that stuff as well. So it is a really, really quick summary. Definitely recommend reading it. Even if it's like two days before your interview, I probably would say like, if you haven't done any reading, read this, you can do it. Also, if you are interested in like medical law and debates and just, um, the non sciencey side of medicine, the more kind of human-based side, this one is really good for that. Okay, so moving on to the non-fiction books. Um, these ones have a lot of stats in, but they're still doable. I would say the first one I'm gonna talk about is called Bad Farmer, and that is by Ben Goldacre. And this guy is a genius. He's written another book called Bad Science, and both of them are really good reads if you're um, in any kind of healthcare field involved in sort of pharmaceuticals, just science in general. I loved it so much. I, I mean, it was a, it's a chonky book. It's like, I can't remember now, like 600 pages. Um, compare that to the last one I mentioned, which is like 84 pages. This is a big book. Um, if you're in year 12, summer holidays, this is one to read then. I think that was when I read it. Take might take a few weeks, but um, it's really interesting. It talks about so much stuff that people don't know that goes on. So basically, The Bad Farmer is more about um, pharmaceutical side of this stuff. Bad science is about mixed messages in the media like myths basically myths that are out there surrounding healthcare and medicine bad pharma is a lot to do with the pharmaceutical industry nice guidelines um it talks about um what else just manufacturing drugs doctors prescribing drugs based off of bribes basically <laughs> it's really good you need to read it um it's really interesting and if you if you're not clued up about how GPs prescribe drugs or why they prescribe them, not even GPs, clinicians as well. It's really interesting, oh my god, it will make you question so much. Not in a bad way, like, it exposes things that you wouldn't want to be, what well, you wouldn't want to happen, but it's kind of important that you're aware of them. It's like a gossip, like, it's like a 600 page gossip book about bad pharmaceutical companies Okay, so the last book I'm gonna talk about is called Human Genetics, The Basics. Um, I read this, when did I read it? At the end of year 12. I didn't take to it that much. That might just be because it wasn't particularly medical related, as in to, to medical school. It wasn't a diary, I mean, it was non-fictional, um, but not in the same way that Bad Farmer was. I have to point out that Ben Goldacre is a doctor himself. He writes it from the perspective of a doctor criticizing other the system basically, which is quite interesting. Human genetics, the basics, is more a sort of biological sciences type of side of things. Um, it's an introduction to, oh my God, it's really broad actually. It includes things like the evolutionary ancestry of human beings and, and how we evolved to be who we are now. It also talks about mm, like biochemistry and all of the stuff that goes on inside our cells. Really interesting read and if you're interested, I think, particularly in applying to somewhere like Cambridge or Oxford or a school that does a medical school that is very science focused and takes a more traditional route is a good read um, and it is definitely it will put you in good stead for taking A levels and if you have to write the extended essay in biology it's a really good one for that oh and even if you're doing an EPQ if you're doing an EPQ on genetics this book is gold you should definitely like look it up um, but probably my least favourite one I've read. I don't think I mentioned it in my personal statements. Yeah. Definitely, I would say, if you can watch a film, <laughs> it's, there's a lot of reading you're gonna have to do anyway for A-levels. If you can watch a film like Viewpoint 90 Euthanasia, that is, that's a good one to watch. I don't know if it's on YouTube, but I borrowed it as a DVD from my 
college library. Um, yeah, that's a good one. And if yeah, any documents you can read. If you do some reading, so for example, like I did, I read um, Trust Me, I'm Junior Doctor, and then I went and did my research into the Junior Doctor strike and the Junior Doctor Agreement of 2016 myself. So definitely reading, and it's only a few pages long. You know, you can just find a news article, talk about that, anything you're really interested in, just read it. Just read it, it doesn't have to be a book if you don't want to commit to a book. Um, yeah, but showing that you've got the mixture of both fiction, non-fiction, um, junior doctor, science, well, it's all there, it's all there for you to read. Take it in, use it, write about it in your personal statement, um, use it in interview, think about the arguments that are raised. If you read Medical Ethics, a short introduction, that is brilliant, talk about all of that stuff. Um, you don't necessarily have to like make endless notes on it but just have an awareness and maybe um, once you've read the book just note down anything that you particularly thought stood out to you so that when you go to interview and they say oh can you tell me about this book that you mentioned in your personal statement which they may or may not do um, it's all there and even if they don't do it it doesn't matter you will have learned so much about it I mean sometimes you can read these books and it's enough to put you off medicine sometimes it will make you want to do it even more and then it'll work even harder so um there's there's no wrong decisions just read it enjoy reading um yeah and as always if you have any questions please comment below i will do my best to answer them and i'll see you next time